if we look at the case of the bicycle pump, um, let's say this is uh, our pump cylinder, okay? Looks something like this, and um, all right. Now, up here I have the the plunger, right? Um, if I looked at the inside, you know, it's something like that, um, and it has a sleeve so that all the the air here it can't escape um, or be moved through uh, through that. That's a it seals it at that point, okay? And then I have. Up here, uh, I have my handle, okay? So I push this down, and then there's a valve and, uh, and my tube, and that goes to the tire, okay? I won't bother drawing that, all right? So when I push this down, okay, what happens? Well, uh, first of all, there's a certain amount of air in there, um, which it, when I lift it up, it pulls in air from the outside, and it's equal to atmospheric pressure, okay? So the pressure inside is equal to the pressure outside, initially, okay? But then what happens is when I push down, it has a valve that uh, will open only when uh, the pressure is uh, less on the tire side, okay? So this is connected to the tire, and if the pressure is less inside the tire than in here, in other words, I have a greater pressure in here, then it opens that valve and lets some of that air into the tire, okay? so. So what happens is, uh, before, when I just lift up the pump, it's the same pressure as at outside, or the atmospheric pressure, okay? Um, another name for atmospheric pressure is barometric pressure, okay? Um, two similar uh, terms that are used interchangeably, atmospheric or barometric pressure, all right? So the atmospheric pressure is the same as my initial pressure inside, but then when I push down on the pump, what's happening to my volume, okay? Now the volume of gas inside my pump, okay, uh, is smaller. Okay, and here's my um, pump handle. Now I have that same amount of gas, but it's all compressed into this tiny uh, space down at the bottom, all right? And then going to the tube, I have that same higher pressure all into the tube and in the tire, okay? So, uh, but before the, the valve opens here to let that go into the tube, it is now a, a smaller volume, okay, because I've compressed it down, smaller volume, but what happened to the pressure, okay? The, the pressure increases. Right? Here it's atmospheric pressure, but now I have those same molecules, the same number of molecules bouncing around in there, but it's, they're bouncing on a smaller area, okay? You remember uh, pressure is de defined as force per unit area. So I have the same force of those molecules bouncing around, because the same number of molecules, so I, I have the same uh, you know, number of bouncing around on the walls, um, it's exerting the same force, but now it's on a smaller area, right? So I dividing by a smaller area, that means I'm going to have a higher or larger pressure, okay? So as the volume decreases, my pressure 
increases. All right, um, and uh, we could write this in terms of an algebraic expression because what kind of a relationship is this? Uh, we would say, you know, the uh, the pressure is proportional. This is the symbol that means uh, proportional, and it's the pressure is proportional to. It's not directly proportional to the volume, but it is inversely proportional, and so we write that as one over v. Okay, so uh, pressure is proportional to one over v, and we can put this in the form of a normal equation by saying the pressure equals some constant times 1 over V. This is what we call the proportionality constant. All right. And uh, the, the uh, handy thing about this is we can solve for that constant and uh, and then we have an expression of uh, of, a, of a law, okay, something that is the same um, in repeated measurements. So if we solve for this constant, we have one over v. So if we multiplied both sides by the volume, that would cancel, and I'll have my constant equals um, pressure times the volume. This is a arrangement that we typically put it in instead of V times P. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so this is a constant. So um, what this is saying is that no matter how my pressure changes, my volume will also change such that when I multiply the volume by the pressure, it's a constant. It doesn't change. Right. So in other words, whatever I start with, say my initial or first conditions, okay, um, and then I change those and I have my final conditions, okay, they're still going to equal that constant because it is constant. So whether I have one set of conditions, whatever they are, you know, if I increase the pressure, the volume decreases so that when I multiply them, it's constant. So that means if this is my increased pressure and this is my decreased volume, it's equal to that constant. Right? And so what I have is this relationship P1V1 equals P2V2. That's the form that we typically write it in. All right? And this is known as Boyle's Law. Okay. So, however the pressure changes, the volume compensates for that change such that um, my initial conditions and the final conditions, when I multiply them, it's the same value. Okay.